Hey everyone, it's Mr. G, and today we're back with another request, this time from Username, who asks for a quick introduction on how or whether it's possible to migrate an HTML, CSS, and JavaScript site to the WordPress framework. And if I didn't know that, to talk about machine learning with Python. So I'm actually not that familiar and experienced in machine learning. So I wanted to start with that because I actually did have a tab open because I found a course that Google has online for free, an introduction to machine learning, I think using Python. So, um, so I'll put the link in the description below, but this is what it looks like and you can go through it and learn about machine learning and it's very interesting. Uh, but in regards to the WordPress question, first I'm going to show you what a normal HTML site looks like. So we have our HTML, we have our CSS, and we have our JavaScript for just a, a regular site. And this is very bare bones. It just says hello world in the website, but just pretend it was more advanced. The, the issue with bringing it over to WordPress is that WordPress is an entire system, an entire framework for building websites. And I have used WordPress and built like three or four sites over the last 10 years or so, or managed sites. So I do know a little bit about it, and it's pretty simple for someone who doesn't know how to code. So if you're doing HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, you must know how to code, or at least how to use the markup language and how to style it, and um, and maybe use some JavaScript to, to introduce some interactivity. But with WordPress, for the most part, it's all done for you behind the scenes, and all you're doing is maybe choosing a theme, maybe adding some plugins, and um, and adding posts and pages, creating posts and creating pages. So what some people will do is they'll go to WordPress.org. I, I think people that are a little bit more advanced and maybe more tech savvy, they'll go to WordPress.org and you can actually download WordPress and run it locally on your computer. So you can download it, but you need to set up a database to do that. And, um, and it's not going to be easy for most people. And if you want to actually get into the inner workings of it, you're going to have to learn a little bit of PHP, uh, especially if you want to create your own plugins, for example. But, um, the P PHP is a very old language, I believe. Actually, let me ask ChatGPT, when did PHP come out? I remember it, I remember hearing about it in the early 2000s. So, um, so yeah, it was released in 1995. And it actually looks like HTML, but then there's PHP within it. I, I could actually ask ChatGPT to show me a sample um, index page using PHP. Let's see if that shows me um, shows what I'm what I'm describing here. So it looks like HTML, but then there's going to be a section that is basically has like a PHP tag, and that's where the PHP code is um, basically inserted in there. So WordPress is based off of this. It uses this under the hood. Um, so if you do set it up, you could actually look at it and see how that works and you can learn some PHP. But you, like I said before, you have to set up a database because everything is stored in the database, all the posts and pages. Um, so then the other option you have is to go to something like WordPress.com and then you could just pay a monthly fee and they'll handle all of the backend stuff for you. And all you'd have to do is use their admin dashboard to create your pages, create your um, uh, posts. So usually people use WordPress for blogging or creating a site that has like, like a new site. Um, and it, apparently it's the world's most popular website builder. I didn't quite know that, but probably could have guessed. Um, okay, so that's one option. That's the other option you could you could use. And the one that I did when I when I actually created MrG.com for the first time a few years ago, I used something called Namecheap. And so these these websites allow you to these web hosts allow you to basically run WordPress and you're in full control of the database, you're in full control of the dashboard, of the themes, and all that stuff. Um, so actually, they, it looks like they have like a WordPress site, uh, a managed WordPress hosting site. So this is probably going to be the exact same thing as going to like WordPress.com and going through their plans and doing something like that. Um, but I don't know how much this costs. Let me see. So see pricing and plans. So yeah, so like the, the cheapest one is $17. Um, what is that a year or a month? For the first year, it's seventeen dollars, which is pretty cheap, and then it renews for fifty dollars a year. So that's actually pretty cheap. But what I ended up doing is I went to shared hosting, 
And then I ended up deploying my own WordPress uh, instance in the shared hosts. So I did something like this. Um, and this gave me a little bit more freedom if I didn't want to use WordPress to do something else, to maybe do the HTML, CSS, JavaScript from scratch. Um, but then I ended up choosing or deciding to use WordPress. So I just, it was easy to deploy it on my own uh, shared host. Okay, so those are the options. The, the, so in regards to the question, if I want to bring this over to WordPress, it's not as simple as like a one-to-one. -one. It's not just as simple as like a one-click, you know, installation or something like that. Because basically what you have to do is you have to look at how many pages you have and the structure of your posts. And you have to figure out a way to set up WordPress to be able to bring that over. And the other thing that you're going to lose if you do bring a your own custom HTML, CSS, JavaScript site over to WordPress is that you're going to have to really heavily customize the themes um, if you want it to look exactly the same. And it's not impossible. It's just going to take a while, depending on how robust your personal site is. So it is possible. I don't know if I would recommend it. I would just probably suggest looking at the WordPress themes and you can even pay for themes if you want and find something that you like. But um, when I did it, I ended up using something called Elementor, I think it was called, that allowed me to really customize the theme that I was using. Uh, but I wasn't trying to bring over, port over a, a website over to WordPress that, that I had built from scratch. So it is possible. I don't know if I would recommend it. It depends on like the structure of your site, but it is possible, just so you know, username. So yeah, so that's all I have. Hopefully that was a... That was a decent uh, explanation of how you could do it. If you need any help, you could always ask uh, ChatGPT. Uh, you could even ask it, how can I port an HTML, CSS, JavaScript site to WordPress? That's probably what I should have done first <laughs> before going on my rant with all the different things. But you could see you could set up a local environment like I, like I described. Yeah, so you could, you could do that. I've done that before. I actually don't have it set up on this computer. Um, then you can install it, you could set it up, you have to choose a theme. And so here's where I was talking about with child themes, maybe you have to customize your own theme. Um, and so that's going to be a little bit intense, but if you created your own site, uh, then it is possible. You are capable of doing it. Anyone's capable. You just have to spend the time and learn it. Um, and yeah, if you want to extract the HTML, if you want to copy paste the different parts of the HTML, you can do that into your own posts or into your own pages. Um, so yeah, you could create template files, migrating the content. Uh, so yeah, it is. It definitely is possible. But like I said, I, I I think I would just rather start from scratch if I was trying to create my own WordPress site and pick a theme that I like and then build off of that. Okay, so uh, hopefully that was helpful, and I'll see you in the next video.